there is a sutra known as the Play in Full that tells the story of how the Buddha Shakyamuni manifested in this world and how he attained awakening. Over 27 chapters, the sutra first presents the events surrounding the Buddha's birth, his childhood, and his adolescence in the royal palace of his father, king of the Shakya nation. It then recounts his secret escape from the palace and the years of hardship he faced in his quest for spiritual awakening. Finally, the sutra reveals his complete victory over the demon Mara, his attainment of awakening under the Bodhi tree, his first turning of the wheel of Dharma, and the formation of the very early Sangha. The following excerpts are abridged from chapters 21 and 22, Conquering Mara and Perfect and Complete Awakening. When the Bodhisattva bathed in the Naranjana River and enjoyed a meal, his physical strength came back to him and he now began to walk towards the great Bodhi tree. As the Bodhisattva walks towards the seat of awakening, rays of light stream forth from his body, pacifying the lower realms and causing all unfortunate states to cease. All beings with impaired faculties recover their senses. Anyone who suffers from disease is healed. Anyone feeling discomfort attains happiness. All who are struck with fear find release. At that moment, all sentient beings are relieved of harms inflicted by attachment, anger, ignorance, wrath, greed, cruelty, ill will, envy, and jealousy. At that moment, no one experiences dying, moving to the next life, and taking birth. At that moment, everyone engenders love, altruism, and a feeling that all beings are each other's mothers and fathers. Nevertheless, knowing he must also satisfy the intellect of those who lack dedication, the Bodhisattva picks up a bundle of grass on which to sit, and he sits down like a lion, like a hero, in a powerful, steady, diligent way. And meanwhile, Mara awakens from a dream filled with omens as to what may happen to him and his entourage should the Bodhisattva awaken and he is so terrified that he gathers his armies, his retinue, his generals and his gatekeepers and implores them to advance to destroy the monk seated at the king of trees. Awful forms of demonesses, flesh eaters and hungry spirits one-eyed, limping, with hunger in their eyes, run towards the Bodhisattva with outstretched hands, distorted faces, and terrifying cries. Such an army of demons stretch 80 leagues on every side. Unmoved, the Bodhisattva embraces Mara and his demonic retinue with thoughts of love and compassion. Like a lion, he sits without fear, fright, anxiety, timidity, and disturbance. Touching his hand to this great earth, it shakes. Now Mara feels unhappy and full of suffering. And even though he is miserable and ashamed of himself, he is so overpowered by pride to such an extent that he cannot leave. He cannot turn back and flee. Instead, he rallies his men on further and sends his daughters to seduce the Bodhisattva. But the daughters return defeated and Mara feels even more miserable, unhappy, angry, and disappointed. He's more determined than ever to get him away from the seat of awakening. And although the gods who attended upon the Bodhisattva tried to discourage Mara, he is not deterred. I am Lord of Desires and Master of the Universe. I rule over gods, demigods, humans, and animals. All of them fall under uh, my control. So, uh, get up. Since you're in my realm, follow my orders. If you are master of sense pleasures, you are clearly not a master at all. Look who I am in reality. I am a master of the Dharma. If you are a master of sense pleasures, you should not go to the lower realms. While you watch powerlessly, I shall attain awakening. With a mind possessed by anger and full of desire for the divine realms and a belief that the self is either permanent or impermanent and the thought that liberation is a place you can go to. With such mistaken preconceptions, past sages practiced austerities. Not knowing the truth, they preached the existence of a soul variously claiming that this soul is all-pervasive 
confined to locations, eternal, with form, without form, with qualities, without qualities, an agent and not an agent. This is what they claimed. But today, sitting here on the seat, I will attain stainless awakening. I will defeat you, Mara, and repel your enemy and soldiers. I will explain to the world about the origin and arising of things, and also about Nirvana, the cool state where suffering is pacified. <laughs> Catch that Gautama, who sits alone in the wilderness, and bring him quickly to me. Take him to my palace, shackle, fetter, and yoke him, and make him my gatekeeper. I will watch him suffer and cry out uncontrollably in many different ways, a slave of the gods. <laughs> it is possible that someone can make drawings in the empty sky, or catch the blowing wind with a lasso, or make the bright sun and moon fall from the sky to the earth. Yet you, or countless beings like you, will never force me away from this tree. Powerful army of Mara rushes forward with wild cries and beating drums, and yet the Bodhisattva remained still. No one can harm me here beneath this tree. Not even someone who can destroy the dry Kiliocosm and count its motes of dust. Not even someone who can draw all the water in the oceans through a single straw. Not even someone who can split the supreme diamond mountain in a single instant. Mara raises his sword and threatens to cut the Bodhisattva away like a bamboo twig and his armies hurl erupting volcanoes at him as well as trees with their roots and copper and iron. They rain down iron balls and bolts of lightning and swords and poisoned arrows shatter the earth's surface. They attack him from all sides and yet he witnesses this army of demons. This pure being understands that they are like an illusion. There is no Mara here, no army, no being and also no self. Like the moon reflected in a pond. So does this threefold universe revolve. There is no I, no man, no woman, and no self. There is no ear, no nose, no tongue, and no body. No one created these phenomena, and no one experiences them. They arise in dependency and are empty, both from within and without. As he proclaimed the truth that all phenomena are empty, the Yakyas, who are agreeable to discipline, receive the weapons in their hands to be flower garlands. This earth is my witness. In the past, I have made millions of elaborate sacrifices and never denied those who petitioned me. Water and fire and wind are my witnesses. And so are Brahma, the Lord of Beings, the Moon, the Sun and the Stars. The Buddhas in the Ten Directions are my witnesses. My discipline, practice and the superior branches of awakening are all my witnesses. Generosity, discipline and patience are my witnesses. Diligence, concentration and knowledge. The four limitless contemplations and the five higher knowledges are my witnesses. In fact, all the gradual practices of awakening are my witnesses. The gods proclaim. At this supreme seat, you have conquered and love the wicked army of demons. Hero, today you shall attain awakening. The ten powers, the unique qualities, the distinct realizations, and the experiences of a Buddha you shall attain today. An adept among beings, a lotus on the lake of wisdom has appeared. Untainted by mundane concerns, he will cause a cloud of great compassion to mass, which will shower throughout the realm of phenomena. The gentle rain of Dharma, medicine to living beings, will cause all the seeds of the roots of virtue to sprout, bring growth to the saplings of faith, 
and yield the fruits of liberation. After his enlightenment under the Bodhi tree, the Buddha began to teach the Dharma and did so for the next 45 years. <laughs>